Greetings WordPressers, Jackson here. Welcome to the channel. Nice to have you as always. So animations, not not a huge fan, not massively into them, but done right, you can bring a little bit of little bit of sparkle to your uh, web pages. Obviously nothing like that built into WordPress off the bat. Was doing a block theme build a few months ago and designer requested that we have a few animations. And you can do this fairly easily with a bit of J JavaScript and a little bit of CSS. But I thought I'd have a little poke around in the repo and see if there was anything for animations specifically for blocks. And of course there is. There's a few to choose from. I'll show you which one I found and chose and show you exactly how to use it. And like I said, you can, you know, you can't, you can't get carried away with this stuff. But you can do some interesting stuff and hold tight towards the end of the video where I do sort of kind of show you a little bit of the crazy stuff you can do. But anyway, on with this. Animations for block themes. Right, let's get a little bit more animated, shall we? Here we go. We've got a fresh install of WordPress 2024 installed. Let's go to our back end. We're going to go to plugins and add a new one. The one we're after is the block animation CSS animations for Gutenberg blocks plugin. Let's uh, do a search for that on the repo. Here's the one we're after. We're going to install now and activate that. Now there's no settings. There's no setup. You just go straight to your page. I've already created a, a new page for animations and it's basically just a copy of the home page. Let's have a look at that. You see there's our animations page. No animations currently. Let's sort that out. So like I said, no settings, but if you just highlight any of the blocks, you'll see we've got an animations tab here on the block. And it's super simple. You've got a drop down, hit the drop down. You can see you've got tons of animations, backing, bouncing, fading, flipping, rotating, sliding, zooming, rolling, light speed, Loads of other bits and pieces. We'll have a look at a couple of those later on. So much fun to be had. Let's do a search for fade because we want to fade this in and up. And you see when you choose it, you get a little preview. And if you want to see the animation again, you just click the replay animation button. And there you go. You see it again. Let's get some more going. We'll get this paragraph animated and we'll do another fade in up. And we'll delay this one for 500 milliseconds and we'll make that just a little bit slower. We'll also add some animation to the main button here. We'll just do a regular fade in for that, but we'll delay it by a good few milliseconds. We'll actually let's make it two seconds and we'll have a nice slower speed on that. Let's update that and have a look how that's turned out. Give that a refresh sliding up fading in and that's all pretty cool. Let's have a look at some more. Let's do something with this image here. Let's let's slide that in and up like that. Let's have a look how that goes. Now you see here, I quite like all this to happen before the image does its thing. So there's a great option here. If we go further down, we could put a delay on it, but let me show you this great little feature, which is trigger on offset. And what this means is we can trigger the animation when the user scrolls down the page. Let me show you what I mean. We change that to percentage. If we change that to say 60%, update that. When you hit the page, no image doesn't come in. And then when you start scrolling, once you scroll 60% of the viewport, the image comes in. Isn't that rather groovy? Right, let's get back and see what other funky stuff we can do. So this headline here, let's animate that, but we're not going to choose anything from the drop down. We're going to use this typing animations feature. If you pop it open, it just tells you where to go and find it. And what it's saying is that this animation is actually in the formatting toolbar, which is this fella up here. And if turn that off. You see that I've got my formatting toolbar at the top, which is my preference. You can turn it off and have it just above the content. I like it at the top, but you do what you want to do. Okay. So with this one, you need to highlight the text. Is it exactly the same if you were formatting anything, like if you were making it bold, etc. And on the drop down, formatting drop down here, you see you've got typing animation. We'll leave that as default. Let's update that. Let's go back to our front end and give that a refresh. There's our text fading in and fading up, button comes in, image looking good, sliding up and look at this. 
Typing animation, isn't that rather groovy? Yes, it is. Back to our editor. Let's um, let's try another one. Now, there's another format-related animation. Let's put in some more text here. Let's put a big number, 10,000. And on the animations here, we're not going to animate it using the drop-down, but we're going to use count animations. And same deal here. This, again, is in the formatting drop-down. So let's highlight the text. Let's go to our full main drop-down. This is our count animation. Let's update that and let's see how that works. Let us refresh our page. There's a nice text button comes in later on. Image slides up. We've got our text typing and look at this. We've got a counter. Isn't that cool? Right. Let's have a quick whiz through some of the other crazy stuff you can do with this. And I do mean crazy, right? The other thing is um, on if we look at the animation, say for this image here, let's pick a one of the bonkers ones, Jello, And we're not going to delay it. We're not going to do anything with the speed. We're going to trigger it when we hover on it. So play on hover. Let's update that, show you what I mean. Hard refresh. Let's get our image. And if we hover over it, were he? A little Jello action there. And of course, there's just zillions of different things you can do. Let's, anim let's just show you some of these animations. You know, shaking. Down, up, in, out, shake it all about. Bouncing. Heartbeat. Wobbling. I mean, it's just, yeah, crazy stuff. Be careful. Right, so you've seen it, you know, how easy it is to implement some of that sort of stuff. So I've made a couple of different versions for you to give some ideas of some real world applications. Uh, let's get this down a couple of notches on the zoom so you can see it better. Refresh that. See, kind of cool, huh? Kind of cool. Like I said, you can get super crazy with this, creative and crazy. And so I'll let you into a little secret. I've always wanted a burger joint, Jackson Flips, Jackson Flipping Burgers, and you can do all this sort of stuff. Isn't that kind of groovy? Layers of different images positioned up and down on the page and a really quite silly but very cool animation there. Right, one last little thing. How does this affect performance of your page? And what resources are being brought in to actually make all this animation happen? Uh, let's go back to the home page, which, got, which has got no animations on it. See, no, no animations. I'm going to open up the inspector and go to our network tab. Give that a refresh and we'll have a look at what sort of... Let me just move that up so you can see here. It's down at the bottom here. You'll see that that is 1.16 meg. Still actually a bit too big actually for a page like this. Should be less than 400, 300 even. So we go to our animations page, which has all our animations on. You'll see that it's only about 30 odd K larger. So not a massive overhead. Yeah, there's some browser CPU being used here, but it really is quite minimal. 30 odd K for the kind of stuff we're talking about is really not that bad. So if you want to lose a few hours and get a little bit more creative with your, with your block theme animations, this is right up your street. Yep, you can go a little crazy, try not to, but uh, if you do like a bit of block theming, there's plenty more block theming tips and tricks in this next video. But until next time, I shall see you later.